Today, Friday, March 17th, uh, Tenant has announced that they'll be raising cash through a brokered private placement. Um, in this video, I want to quickly review that private placement. Uh, it's very similar to uh, a previous uh, money raised, the private placement that they've done already. So that'll be a quick recap. And I want to summarize what the total dilution could be, how much cash they could totally get uh, through their f three possible financings. And probably what's most useful is I'll take a look at the potential cash burn and how long their cash may last. I'm not going to go through the private placement uh, in details. You can go to their website and take a look. Again, everything is pretty much identical to the $7 million private placement. Uh, that was 700 units in total. This is just up to 2,500 units. Uh, and the only thing probably worth uh, paying attention to or that's unique is this is for accredited investors only. So it's not a... Uh, open opportunity just for anybody to make an investment. So I'm going to get to this private placement in a couple slides, but sort of going through this chronologically, um, they wrapped up a previous private placement uh, in two pieces, um, 700 units in total. I think it was 308 first, and then in February they finished uh, up that placement. And this is a uh, will be carbon copied into the current um, money raise. So convertible debentures, 10% interest, uh, $83 a month uh, per unit is what it'll cost them. And of um, there's debentures and warrants, and I've summarized previously, this is a slide I'm repeating, um, how many shares uh, the dilution from the debenture, if it's converted, uh, it's auto-converted at $1.50 a share and uh, the warrants, if they're all exercised, uh, how many total um, shares in cash. So uh, there's a total of 14 million dilution that's already uh, been done. This placement's closed. And if the warrants get exercised, they could get another uh, 14 million. So the current uh, brokered private placement, that again is for accredited investors, uh, exactly the same type of terms, just slightly different total um, uh, amounts because the unit number is much larger. Um, so same sort of cost and interest per month. So it's over $200,000 uh, per month a tenant will be paying in interest payments until these uh, convertible debentures uh, convert or assuming they do eventually convert. So in total, between the two placements, they're looking at uh, a little over $250,000 uh, per quarter. So $1,000, sorry, per month in interest payments. And this is something I'll factor into the, the cash flow at the end. So the, this current private placement will give them up to $25 million, And if all the warrants get exercised, uh, 50 million potential at a, a $2 uh, per share. Uh, I believe the minimum amount of units was going to be a thousand. I use the max numbers throughout this video for all my calculations, kind of looking at, you know, best case scenarios. Again, there's no guarantee these warrants get exercised, but that's what I'm, uh, I'm going to be looking at. Then we have this uh, short a uh, short prospectus that hasn't turned into a final prospectus yet and hopefully that'll raise another um, 30 million dollars we don't know what the share price will be but tenant seems to be sticking to this dollar per share in the other private placements now they had to do it through debentures so we'll have to see if they can keep to that dollar share but that's what i, I use for my math in in guessing what they could get uh, so I wanted to fairly quickly get to a summary. So this private placement is done between January and February, all 700 units. They have raised um, 7 million. They have uh, issued 14 million shares and they could get uh, a max of another 14 million if all the warrants are um, exercised. And I guess this share count wouldn't be, um, this would be, again, if the warrants are all exercised. They haven't issued all of those uh, shares yet. 
the brokered private placement will close in early April. So I'm not gonna check this one off. Um, a max of 50 shares if all the warrants and everything's converted. Uh, and this is gonna give them 25 million. So we'll take a look shortly in terms of cash burn and, and try to figure out how long this cash might last. Uh, I use this sort of 7 million as a bit of a base and how many months it lasted uh, and the cash they had already to try to do a worst case scenario of their cash burn. Then we have this prospectus that we've been waiting months and months and months. Um, that could be a maximum of 60 million shares, sort of fully diluted all the warrants. Uh, it would give them 30 million immediately and a potential for another 60 million if all the warrants are exercised. So if everything happens here, um, the share price goes above $2, which would trigger all the warrants and all the debentures converting, uh, tenant could have um, about 225 million shares. Okay? I'm using about 100 million, I think it was 99 at the end of quarter three for the shares plus 124 million more. So current shareholders are being more than uh, sort of cut in half in terms of how much of the company that we own. The total potential money, which so seems a bit high, um, they could end up less fees of 170 million or so. Um, again, this requires a lot of uh, warrants being exercised, but this seems like more than enough cash, um, unless they're going to burn way more cash than I would think. So it. The company could be okay cash-wise um, if they could make some progress. So let's um, sort of look at cash burn last. So the most recent data we have is from uh, Q3. There's no Q4 um, earnings or year-end earnings yet. So they um, burnt uh, about 1.2 million per quarter in sort of recurring um, losses, not counting one-time items. So I'm going to use that as kind of my bare minimum cash burn. I have little reason to think that the cash burn would have possibly improved from this 1.2 million. So, um, so this sort of sets up my minimum cash burn. That 1.2 million is right from that previous slide, sort of dividing that by three and rounding up slightly, dividing by three months. And then if you look at all the debentures they've issued and there's 10% interest to be paid monthly, that's another, um, a little under, uh, a third, a um, little under, 300,000 per quarter. So we're about a million and a half at bare minimum. I don't see any way being under that going forward um, per month. Um, so about four and a half million per quarter or 18 million is what I'm figuring is the, the bare minimum best case scenario. Again, this is not what I'm expecting, but I don't see any chance of being less than that. I was trying to come up with an estimate and the of what my guess would be of their actual cash burn so they had eight million on the balance sheet um, at the end of quarter three sorry i don't have that number in front of me um, and not all of that is going to be um, accessible but if you take the eight and the seven from the private placement that's 15 million now i'm pretty sure it's likely they've gone through all of that money uh, now, or that's the assumption I want to use. What if, if they went through every penny they had? So that's 15 million. And I'm saying they're going to, but there's no way they could have spent more than 15 million or they don't seem to have it over six months. So the six months would be Q4 and Q1, January, February, March of this year, because um, the current private placement is going to uh, close April 7th, they believe. So I'm assuming they used up all their money through the first three months. So you get to about two and a half million per month as their worst case scenario cash burn over Q4 and Q1, which would be 30 million a year. So uh, maybe kind of guessing uh, a cash burn, sort of just using the middle of the two numbers for, I would guess, maybe about two million a month or 24 million per year. 
Um, so that 24 million per year is pretty close to the current private placement of 25. So I'm hoping, and a bit of emphasis on hoping with this, that the current private placement would be about one year uh, of cash burn uh, at the current moment. Now, this wouldn't include ex more expansion, hiring in Canada, or a rollout to the U.S. That's going to require more cash. Um, but hopefully, they'll be um, more than fine to get through this year in the short uh, form prospectus if it happened would give them enough to do expansion and get through next year I'd really like to see this company get enough cash to get through this year 2023 and through next year um, things aren't good uh, for raising cash things like uh, Silicon Valley Bank going belly up uh, um, raising money is just going to be difficult and I kind of watched the All In podcast and they talk about how difficult it, it has been and how a lot of tech companies are being very naive uh, through, um, through things right now with their ability to maybe raise cash in the future. Um, so there's a lot of question marks. I'm not even going to try to guess what the earnings might be in Q4 or Q1. There's just way too many variables to even guess. Uh, we'll finally get some information probably early May. So last year, their Q4 year-end earnings came out May 2nd. So should be pretty similar this year. I don't think we're going to learn a lot from these earnings because October, November, December of last year, there's nothing really to talk about in terms of the Canadian side. So we'll just get to see how things we're, we're doing in China and, and a current update. Um, so it won't be to sort of till early June, the end of May, before we'll get Q1 of this year. So a, a pretty big lag in, in getting current relevant information. So I don't think I'll be making any kind of estimates in terms of earnings uh, or revenue for a long time. I just have way too little information uh, to do that. So lots of dilution happening, hopefully a reasonable amount of cash coming in and hopefully raising money with some um, potential um, Canadian news will give some stability to this company and help the share price. Uh, in terms of myself investing in it, I really view this as a binary um, opportunity now. Um, in my mind, if it did go to zero, uh, my portfolio can handle it. It's it's a smaller weighting, um, or this could go well and, and make uh, a pretty good uh, return, even going back to two, three, four, five dollars of old. I know that's not what we're hoping for, but um, I see sort of going to zero or or several hundred percent return as um, the two possibilities for this stock over the next couple of years so hopefully it raises enough cash and still exists a couple of years from now if you have any comments things you think i should have tweaked in my numbers uh i haven't looked at hiring so if you're following this company and have been counting all the new hires i'd love if you sent me a comment and i could try to guesstimate some cash burn based off uh, of the new hirings